Namaste Varun. Lovely to have you all the way from Melbourne. How are you doing? Namaste Saricha Ji. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it is really beautiful uh, to be here, part of this community. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for having me for this effort. Yeah. So, you know, FIA works in creating an awareness on ethics in AI, and it's a community of like-minded people passionate about ethics in AI. Tell us a little bit about the work that you do, Varun. So, um, yeah, let me let me take a minute to uh, have a, a version of my, my experience, because I think it will help with the context uh, of my learning uh, over a period of years. Uh, I started my work career as an as a implementation engineer, where I was a software developer working with the software products and how to install them, configure them for my clients. And this was the time when we were uh, just talking information technology, even cloud was not a thing uh, during that time. Over a period of time, I generated, uh, you know, developed some interest towards information security. And uh, I was also inspired by some of my close friends to join the field. So that's when I moved into the information security field, started with the security operations, then moved into security consulting. And that's where I learned my basics of the governance, risk management, and compliance. And over a period of year, having uh, worn multiple hats uh, for like leading the team, managing, managing the team, you know, uh, finally I'm landing here in this company uh, where I work currently as a sales engineer. And my, my role, is to help my clients in understanding what are the capabilities of the tool, what is what is the uh, art of possible uh, when it comes on to any business use case, and also advise them uh, what is the right way of dealing with any specific use case, uh, what are the situations they are in, and how to you know uh, work through it. So, so that's I do a lot of things together. You know, I advise my clients on what they should be doing. Uh, obviously, I, I, I'm part of the sales organization, so that comes naturally with that, yeah. Oh, thank you. That's very interesting. Yeah. I caught up the words, you know, governance, risk, compliance. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how do you see the role of AI in GRC and the whole integrated risk management space? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's very interesting, actually. Um, I was working for one of the big fours, uh, and that's where you know we used to do this exercise when a lot of regulations are coming from across the world. Like you know, primarily we are working for US, so every state has different sort of organizations. So we used to work uh, like creating how one regulation is mapping to another regulation from another state, right? That you know, suppose. Uh, Europe is saying that uh, you must do A, B, C, uh, but US is saying you should do A and Bs. And we used to come up with the idea that, hey, you know what? We have come up with this unified requirement. Uh, and then this requirement will take care of US, Europe, India, China, for example, right? So we used to call this concept as a uh, integrated requirement still in play. Uh, and uh, that time we used to think that what if, if there is some someone else who can do this work because the, the idea was to read through this entire regulatory text, which, by the way, uh, it's not a novel. It's not a it's not a very interesting read. Right? It's a legal language. Uh, and sometimes you lose your focus because we are not coming from the legal background. So, you know, you lose focus and reading it again and making sense of it. Uh, and very recently, I learned that there are a number of offerings that are coming into the market, which are doing it automatically. Let's just throw the regulations text at them and they are coming up with the requirements uh, which is making sense of it. So that that was one of the use case which I was personally very excited about. And then there are some really innovative use cases are coming which is going to help a lot of companies in the future like, um, you know, just giving them that, hey, you know what, we are this company working in this domain. Um, you know, what are the risks we should be worried about? AI is actually suggesting that you are working in, for example, India, you are working and dealing with personal identifiable information, then you have to, uh, you know, regulate yourself against the privacy regulations, which, by the way, India is coming very soon with, just like akin to GDPR in Europe. Uh, so that, that's the kind of suggestions which will be coming in. And that's why you have to take these library of risk with you and you need to manage those sort of risks. So a lot of interesting uh, applications are coming in. Management of if I'm doing with a particular risk, uh, maybe it is the investment or the banking domain, what are the controls I need to go for it? Till now we were having consultants 
human consultants advising companies that, hey, you know what, for this risk, do these control steps and everything. Now, AI is going to suggest that. Possibly mm-hmm. eating few jobs, but yeah, that's where we are going. But it's, it's, also, it's also like a pair of extra hands that you're getting. Yes, right? absolutely. Getting different dimensions, deeper dimensions of the work. But that, that makes me wonder, what would be the ethical considerations that then you would want to look into this extra pair of hands coming in and making things easy for you and also taking people away from it? <laughs> no, no, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, I'll start this answer by saying that uh, obviously, I really like the analogy you shared that extra hands, 100% these are extra hands. I will add to it. Mm. Extra hands who, who, which are emp- which are full power all the time, empowered all the time, you know, in, in with full energy. They are not, they are not uh, getting tired of things like these, right? So obviously these extra hands are there and they are going to uh, support a lot. Um, when it comes down to the ethical parts of it, so basis of any risk uh, assessment or, or a, when we are managing any risk, the ultimate idea is that we need to take certain decision, right? It, it, is, it is done because we want to take some decision. That decision can be anything, right? Whether uh, sh- should we uh, invest in this particular sector or not? Uh, should we buy a particular product or not? A- everything, we have to do a risk assessment and then we take that decision. If those ethics principles are not followed or if we are not going through, uh, you know, uh, the, the, if we are not doing the right thing, ultimately the outcome of the risk assessment will uh, will will force me to take possibly a wrong decision, you know, and, and any time a, a decision has been taken wrong, it will having certain consequences. Um, if we are lucky, if those consequences are only limited to us, but those consequences can be regulatory in nature as well. Suppose we have taken a decision. I, I don't know if you, uh, it is a very interesting uh, case. You might, might have heard that about the Air Canada chatbot thing, mm. right? You know, what happened that, um, Unfortunately, uh, one uh, passenger had someone passed away in their family and they used the Air Canada chatbot uh, to check about the bereavement fair policy. So the chatbot suggested that, you know, uh, if you are traveling because of some unfortunate reason, you will be eligible for the bereavement fair discount. And then it gave the link to their uh, bereavement fair policy in there. Very down at the bottom of that policy, it was written that you cannot apply this discount retrospectively. So what it means is that if you have already traveled, then you cannot ask for the discount or the refund from the company. Uh, they went into the court. Uh, Air Canada, uh, you know, made a case that the uh, this AI is actually a, a separate legal entity. We are not responsible and things like this. But they actually lost the case. Uh, and uh, they, uh, you know, that, that's how it is. Wow, that's interesting. And it brings me to my last question. So where would GRC be if there was no moral compass built in? Oh, we would be taking where such wrong decisions. Canada case. <laughs> <laughs> we, we would be taking all wrong decisions, right? And we would be bombarded with these regulatory fines. Uh, we will be if we are not taking these. I mean, it is yet to happen in the future. Uh, the AI uh, is yet to come mainstream uh, when it comes to these policies. So but yeah, if you are if you are not being careful, uh, you know, if our data is not AI ready, uh, that is something that again, uh, you know, we are working towards it. That how to enable our customers to ensure that all the data that they have, whether it is in their data lakes, whether it is in their emails, you know, clouds storage everywhere, those companies need to think: is their data AI ready? Right? If because if it is not AI ready then we are feeding wrong data sets to our models <clears throat> and our models are going to generate uh, incorrect predictions, incorrect analysis, which then will lead to you know, loss of trust into the market, which will lead to regulatory fines. And obviously, uh, you know, Air Canada says that you know, we are there for our customers, but they didn't simply agree to pay the bereavement discount to a customer. So that goes very much against their you know, public image as well. Yeah, so I'm seeing a reputation yeah. risk looming large if there are there is no moral compass built in. And before yeah. we say bye bye to you, just want to know what do you think communities like FIA can do more to create this kind of an awareness? Oh, uh, I I I mean 
probably we need an another podcast on that because i am so excited about this effort uh, i know some of those founders personally and really excited about this effort is going i think there are a number of things that is going to happen and the usual responses i'm sure the community has explored themselves i want to tell you what i feel uh, where we should be making maximum impact is that uh, about the education that will be happening you know something that happened during the internet uh, internet and and you know whatsapp era uh, suddenly a lot of people got access to internet a lot of people got access to social media platform and things like these and we are seeing a lot of varied things uh, on i mean uh, what what do you call that false news uh, you know fake news sorry uh, the yes. fake news phenomena right that's a problem that was generated just because we got access to the technology before we were ready for it and i think uh, communities like fear uh, can ensure that we don't do the same thing with the ai we 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 can be a very important voice when it comes to policy making because otherwise a policy will be made by someone who do not understand ai so it's better that someone who understand ai makes that policy fear is the place for that our first uh, effort in in our country uh, for that matter so definitely policy making uh, i i would love to see something we are doing at the school and college level as well you know making those awareness campaigns and things like this so uh, actually I, my list is limitless to be very honest uh, and and uh, i will be finding ways yeah <laughs> that's true yeah thank you so much for your time avarun and wish you all the best in the work that you do so lovely much. to talk to you saita ji thank you so much namaste very nice to meet you and hope to connect again thank you